<laughs> All right, hi guys, hi. it's Jason Alyssa, and we're here with author Nestor Garcia discussing his new book, Sentimental Memories. It's right here, guys. E, we're really excited to be here. Hi guys, today we're here with Nestor Garcia discussing hi. his poetry book, Sentimental Memories. And today we'll be conducting an interview with him. He's a local poet from Bakersfield, California, and we're very excited to be here with him. It's good to be here with you guys, too. It's really exciting, honestly, too. This is actually one of my first ever interviews, so oh. it's really like, it's nerve-wracking, but it's cool. Like it's it's really cool to know that I've come from such a long process. It took me two years to actually finish this. Oh wow! So, so how's it feel to be a published author? It um, I guess you could say it's it's a blessing, honestly, to be um, to even have something out because there's a lot of people who take so much time and time and time and try their hardest to release something and they don't even ever get that opportunity. And to know that I'm coming from Bakersfield to where I feel like Bakersfield has a lot of authors that aren't, um, oh, well, not even just authors, artists or creatives in general that aren't really, they're not giving that sole focus. And it's it's really good to kind of um, try to see if I can grow a platform to kind of not even not only present myself, but help others. Exactly. And that's actually what we're all about here. Is this is like your first question and it's like a 20 minute answer. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so, oh, you said it took you two years to write this. Yeah. Yeah, so heart and soul in this right here. Heart and soul, basically. And um, truth be told, there's three different versions of the book. Oh, wow, okay. And which one is available to your audience? The one that's available to my audience, would, I would say, would be the third version. Because, to be completely honest, the first version, because it is heart and soul, I, I, I put it on making it as heart and soul. <laughs> um, the first version took me, like, six months to complete, but it was a very... Um, it was a very loving chapter, I guess you could say, because obviously a lot of um, writers um, take their material from um, personal experiences, journeys, things like that, um, relationships. And with me, I, w I guess you could say I was in the honeymoon phase of a relationship mm -hmm. when I started the process, when I sat down and was like, I've written all this, all this time, why not try to see what comes out of it? Let's release a book. And then, yeah, basically, um, that version, I kind of threw away the moment the honeymoon phase collapsed. Okay. And then all these other um, all issues obviously started happening that are told in the book. And I, the, the second version was kind of more, I guess not more of it, but um, it was much more dark. Okay. It was in a more, um, I was in a more, more difficult place, obviously. And then the third and final version, which I'm very, very happy about, and I, I know that this is the version that, I was, that was made to be released, was when I just kind of sat back and realized, okay, I have these two different copies right here. What is important, what is not? What do I feel like expressing myself? What do I feel like adding and expressing myself through writing when I feel like it's not? It's not, what, what do I give purpose to, basically? Nice. So that's when I was just like, okay, let's add this, let's add that from these two different materials, and let's also add more. Let's add more of what I feel like, okay, I got my, I was, I was broken, basically, and there was a point in time where I wasn't broken. So let's mix the two together, and let's see how we can make my individual. How do I make myself feel like, okay, um, I've picked myself, picked up all the pieces that I need to pick up, and I'm no longer in that broken place. Let's see where this takes me. Let's okay, so what are some of the poets that inspired you? Um, I guess you could say um, the majority um, of the poets that I've, Liked are very much um, some of them. I wouldn't say the majority. I changed that. I'd say that, um, some of them are basically like the more like the newer poets, like R. H. Sin, Rain and Biddy is a really mm -hmm. I love her work. And um, when um, when I decided to start writing was when I um, when I started listening. When I felt that I was in a place to where you know what, let's try to do this was after hearing her work and seeing her work and reading her work, and I was just like, if. If her and all these other different authors and poets can open themselves up and like, just basically bleed out everything they feel and pour it into their writing, then why don't I do it? Why don't I have the courage and the strength to do it myself? So, of course. Wow, that's really inspiring. So um, what is one of your favorite pieces that you'd like to share with the readers from Sentimental Memories? So I would say one of my favorite pieces has to be The Loneliness. It's a more sad one, but I really, I really... Um, when writing that one, it just I really did feel like I was it was at my most vulnerable point. So I was like, let's do this, let's let's just throw it out there. 
Okay. And are, you're excited, you said that your book is now being uh, released to Target and Amazon and Barnes & Noble. It's a huge step for you. How does it feel? It, um, it's honestly, it's like a dream come true, to be completely honest, because I never would have thought that when I started writing this, that it would be coming this far. Wow. That it would be to this point to where, wow, I can um, go to Barnes & Noble. Oh, there, there she is. Yeah. Um, all, amongst all these other great authors and great, um, great literary um, components, it's just... It's really it's like a dream come true. That is so awesome. Well, we are ex super excited to celebrate your book, and especially to know that you're a local poet. That is just so awesome and exciting. I know it's um, it's crazy. Like I, I just <laughs> it, when I think about it, I'm just like wow. Like I'm 19 years old. I'm so from fun. this little city here in Bakersfield, California, and it's just like it's just so much. So so much is happening so quickly. So especially because here our literature culture, I feel is. Um, it's barely starting to boom. We, we haven't had a community that has supported such artists. And uh, now I feel like we have all these platforms and all of these things where uh, poets can come together, writers can come together and actually feel, feel free to share themselves here in Bakersfield. And that is true, especially with social media, yes. with um, just the internet in general, when you use it for its purpose, like, yeah. um, it can take you places, it really can. Mm -hmm. And um, you'll see so many other different people, so many different authors and poets and um, creatives in general, just um, showcasing their work, showing showing themselves, because that's what art is in its, in its truest form. And it's just, um, like I said, it's just I feel really blessed to be a part of all this, because I do see it. I've been to a lot of different showcases here in town, and I do see how much, when you really pay attention to all of it, there is so much creativity and so much, um, so much power in it here in Bakersfield that we finally see it starting to build itself up. Just really good, especially for us, like um, young adults, yeah. because so for I feel like for a lot of people nowadays, um, we have to juggle like with literally like with social media, like the microscope is on you. What are you doing? Where are you taking your life? What um, is college for you? Is it not for you? That kind of thing. Yeah, definitely. And to see so many people just saying like, "Oh, screw it! I'm gonna throw myself into what I'm passionate about." And follow my and to have an audience so, that supports yes. it, even uh, exactly. people you don't even know supporting it. It's, it's inspiring. It's moving. Um, it's great. So, what is one thing that you would like to share with your readers, just about your work, or just anything in general that you would like to? I would say that um, something that I'd like to share would be that I, like I said, it took me two years to throw myself into this, and it, it was a very learning experience, and it's brought me to a place to where I feel like I've always wanted to have a platform to help other people. Um, like I'm very, very, very particular about mental health and uniqueness and finding yourself and loving your individual self. And that's something that I wanted to showcase with the book. Like even on, if you take a glance at the back, at the back of it, it even sa says like, um, I take you through my journey, my experiences of um, the falling in and out of love with other people, with myself. I go through, so, um, I touch upon all the experiences that I went through in my life and how it's made me into the person I am today to where you can go from a very broken place and build from that. And I love this quote you have right here. I, I used to wonder what it would be like to pour my heart into the world. That's moving. That's uh, truly inspiring. Like you poured your heart into Thank the you. world in this book. It's great. <laughs> this town... <laughs> is really, it's not very fluid with, it's very, that's the right word, yeah, it's yeah, very conservative. Call it out as far as conservative. It's very conservative, yeah. yeah. So, with this, with this book, how do you, how do you plan on, I guess, marketing towards people in town? Truth be told, that is, it's been, uh, it's one of the things that I've had to really try to, when, Releasing the book, I had to, try to I had to sit down and think about what audience audience will only cater to, and what um, what general theme am I trying to like promote here? Yeah. And um, to be completely honest, I feel like when I was younger, there was not very much um, in, in any way, not even this way. There wasn't um, many LGBT. Um, Authors or poets or musicians or people you could look up to, because I would think about it and I'd just be like, um, "Oh, this person's cool. This person's cool." But like, how do I see myself in that? Yeah, it's hard to see someone when there's mm -hmm. not. That was one of the 
one of the main things. There's not a lot of about LGBT topics. And um, obviously, when I'm talking about the pillow I had, it was obviously um, that, um, that, L that LGBT representation. I feel like I want to be that for you. Yeah. For the same reason, because a lot of the authors that I um, that I like with your part, with the exception of the um, R.H. Sin and like um, all these other male authors, I do like to read a lot of um, from the female representation because I feel like with women, it's more um, it's more easier for them to delve into their emotional mm -hmm. their, their emotional space mm -hmm. and all of that, and they're more um, they're more open to that. They're more willing to release what they feel and how they feel. And I feel like um, I don't want to say that oh I'm I'm doing it by myself. I want to try to bring that into yeah. into yeah. into Bakersfield's culture because I feel like Bakersfield's culture, um, not to bash anyone, it seems to be very ignorant in the sense that. Believe me, I know I'm bi, and I've never I've never had any representation in this genre. You know, when I do read something like that, it's either like super gross, like a or something mm -hmm. like that, or it's like someone from. New York, you know, like I've never had local representation. Yeah. You're doing that. That's really yeah. cool. <laughs> it's, that was one of it was one of the things I, I tried to focus on when starting both of the books. Mm -hmm. I was just like, okay, because at the beginning that was one of that was also one of the reasons why there's like so many different versions of it. So you went in there like saying Yeah, because I was I was yeah. afraid of like what if people don't like it, what if what if this, what if that, what if it's like, oh my gosh, like why would people do that? Why would yeah. people write that? And then I was, towards the end I was like, you know what? This is me, and I'm not going to present something that's a lie to people. Because how am I going to sit here, like right now, um, we're in an interview. How am I going to sit here in an interview and be like, oh, um, this is about this. And yeah. How this and how just, but that's not true. Like, oh, no. Like, I'm not going to sit here and lie about it. This is who I am. This is what I represent. This is what I stand for. This is what I believe in. This is you. This, this is, is like what I, of Yeah, this is me. Yeah. This is literally me giving you my arm. Basically. Yeah. Like, this is, this there you go. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's basically what, what it is, and for Bakersfield in general, I really do hope that um, the consensus in the end is basically that we are a growing town, not just in the sense of population-wise, like in the sense of cultural, pro culturally, because I feel like Bakersfield sometimes doesn't have a culture. It's very much a mix of so many, and that's good, it doesn't have a culture, because that means that we can create a culture for Yeah. It, it gives us that opportunity, especially as young people. Because in the end, the people who choose to stay here and the people who don't and choose to move out into different places, they will have a home here, no matter what. And it's, I feel like it's kind of our responsibility to kind of show people that. That in the end, we are the future of Baby Children, we are the future of the world in general. I love that. And we have, it's, it, are, it is our responsibility if we want to see change in the culture we have around us, then we need to be that change. We need to, we, we need to show that we are willing to change our, our way of thinking, our way of feeling, our way of viewing the people around us, and just be more accepting and more tolerant and more creative about things. Yeah. Because I feel like when you're when you're a creative person, unless you're very extremely ignorant, you tend to be very more open about so many different things. You tend to just be like, okay, well that is you, that is the way you choose to express yourself. I have my way of expressing myself. But we can coexist with each other. That's just basically how it is. You're giving a lot more substance to the community with this book. And I know a lot of kids who would look at this and it would be so brand new to them because they've never had representation or anything like that. And not even just with the poetry itself, like just because you present yourself in the purest form of art, you know, it's very raw, it's very uncut, and it's exciting. I know yeah, a lot just, of people are going to be excited for this. Um, it really was, it really is, and I'm really, I really do hope that people do see that. It's um, not only to... Not because I not because I want to validate myself, but just to so I can feel like I can give people a sense of validation in general. And you're so young. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's a common thing. I mean, you look great. <laughs> that is really cool. That's gonna we we have youth in our town who want to speak up, who want to say things, but they don't really have you know people similar to their age or close to their age to show them. The way so kind of just yeah, so it's going to ignite something, yeah. yeah. I hope so, I truly do hope so, if you dream to do it, yes. I can definitely see that. I'm excited, like, yeah. how can they not be excited? No, I mean, I'm excited, trust me, inside I'm just like, oh my god, I don't know. Yeah, like, keep composure, no, I mean, yeah, it's, um, it, it really is, um, and like I said, it really is a, a, 
people. I think it's just an experience, and I'm, I'm really like, I'm trying to. There is moments where I'm just like, oh, I have so much to do, but then I'm just like, no, it's not. It's an experience. I'm trying to enjoy the experience of yeah. just being in that moment and just relishing it because it's only been out for like, I'd say, like about a month, month and a half, and it's doing really well. And um, everyone that I that I know that I personally know that has um, bought a copy or um, and read it, it's just like. This is really beautiful. I love it. Like That's I had exciting. someone. I showed this copy of um, to one of my coworkers actually, and she read that that poem, "The Loneliness," and she had to stop reading it because she felt like she was going to start crying and angry about the job. So it was just like when I when I when she told me that, I was just like I felt so bad because I was like, yeah. oh, I don't want to make you cry. <laughs> but then I was kind of like at the same time inside I was like. Because yeah, like, yeah, um, right. I, reached, <laughs> I reached, um, I, I did what my main purpose was to do, was which was to make you feel like you can relate to this topic, and you can, if you were experiencing it with me, and you're in that, you're in that room with me when I was writing it. You know, like little cool ones. Okay. Hey guys, we're here with Esther Garcia discussing his new poetry book, Sentimental Memories. So this is Sentimental Memories, and I'm obviously Esther Garcia. Um, this, I hope this book takes you places, it um, touches your soul, it um, heals your wounds, and it um, just shows you a different aspect or a different approach to life. And I hope the, it's positive messages and it's um, glorious mentality just envelop you in its pages and just help you grow. And we're going to put the links down for his social media so you can check out what he has next. Check down there. <laughs> be sure to like, subscribe, and follow, and be able to purchase his books on Amazon, Target, and a Barnes & Noble near you.